you know, a point that I made in the presentation that I'm able to give on uh, Soft and Text is that Soft and Text had a companion trial called Per K. It started as a suite of three trials. So back in, when we launched the trials in 2003, the third question Per K asked, in premenopausal women where there's uncertain benefit of chemotherapy, if you're giving maximal endocrine therapy with ovarian suppression and oral endocrine therapy, either AI or tamoxifen, what is the role of using chemotherapy? And patients were randomized to whether they received chemotherapy or not. So it was really unfortunate that the trial that started in 2003, it was uh, had to close early because uh, patients, an, an adequate number of patients were randomized that it was taking too long. But that trial that we tried so hard to get going forward in 2003 can't provide us information with this discussion that's ongoing now, uh, 20 years later. So it's unfortunate that group that I work with, the International Breast Cancer Study Group, and Aaron Goldhurst in, per, uh, in particular, has been really passionate about this issue. And um, 20 years later, we still discuss it. It is. I mean, that's, yeah. I, so I had to, in the presentation, I like had to bring it back. And so my colleagues were like, wow, you're kind of giving a dig there. I'm like, but, you know, and it was for many, it wasn't, there were multiple reasons, but it's in clinical trials. People say, oh, if it takes too long, it's not relevant. It's not relevant. 20 years later, we're having the same discussion about mm -hmm. ovarian suppression, directly suppressing or chemotherapy on very young women. So what happens is, so young women, because we have, we, I'll still say we, we have circulating estrogens, right? So treatment for endocrine therapy is slightly different for premenopausal and postmenopausal women. And one of the things that we've long known, so some of the earliest breast cancer treatment was taking out the ovaries with ovrectomy. So with young women who have a hormone responsive tumor, suppressing uh, the ovaries to make them postmenopausal is one of the ways we treat. That's the ovarian suppression. So you can do it with a monthly injection. You can take out the ovaries. Um, so, you know, unpleasant as a young woman to be pushed to be suddenly postmenopausal, have hot flashes, all kinds of things that happen with the menopausal transition. Um, but what can happen, especially in the young women, so if a woman's close to menopause and they give her chemotherapy, especially certain ones push them to being postmenopausal, the young ones have robust ovaries, the chemo isn't enough. But in young, you know, so you can see that in older premenopausal women, they get chemo, they can essentially get this benefit of ovarian suppression of the chemo suppressing their ovaries. Whereas the young women, their ovaries are robust, they remain premenopausal, they're still having menstrual cycles. And so the idea of the soft trial and this research had been, if you suppress their ovaries, you get that benefit for them. And then um, to go on. And so there's still this debate of how much of the chemo is suppressing, how much is the cytotoxic. That's what it's all about. So it's endlessly fascinating, actually.